Nadmo, we draw the disaster plan municipally. We have to draw our plan. We have to revisit the plan. And if there are some changes, we have to do it. So maybe the national plan do not fall at Naira Ulama for their COVID. Mm -hmm. But now it has happened. So what do we do? We have we call the people there, we sat them down. We talk to them, they understood why they have to contribute towards the project. And it will surprise you, 30 meter feet uh, wide stretch. We are almost done with it, not more with the community. It will interest you. A lot of cities, but they've been able to do it. So if within we have the relief items, cement comes, those things, we'll be able to help them with, I think, 50 bags of cement. And they will continue the work. Those are the areas I want them to do. And then to care for our logistics, that we need to work. Hello and welcome to another episode of Broad Daylight with me, Chris Moore. Today, I'm having Mr. Rindok Ashete Mensa. He's the director of Nagmo Home that was municipality here in Amasaman constituency. And today we're talking about um, some details of NADMO and a way forward as an organization. Service, you're welcome. Thank you, madam. I'm glad to have you this morning. You're welcome. <laughs> you guys are doing a lot um, in terms of curbing of disaster. But we know we've all heard the story of what is happening in Keta. I, will, I want to pose a particular question to you concerning the issue of sun winning. And then sun winning, it's, it's, a, it's a major cause of um disaster when it comes to tidal waves i want to also hear your side of the story what do you actually make of this particular statement that is um creating headlines even in parliament really talking about the sun winning activities yeah. really if you turn back for the past years you see the almighty creator a creature in his own wisdom that namely, when there is a rainfall, automatically the water sinks down. Yeah. But now, by winning the sun, automatically there will be some sort of flooding. And after flooding, when the particular area is filled, definitely the water will be running off. And as such, I think it is an albatross that lies on the head of the municipal assembly. And so based on that, not more we move with indicators. Because for us it is prevention. If we can in our uh, capacity, if we can do anything to prevent it. But you know, disasters, you cannot prevent it. You can't prevent it entirely but you try to mitigate it so normally we find indicators we go around we see the red indicators at this area this is what we're supposed to do this is what we're supposed to do to prevent it so we call something deterrence uh the the, the, the deterrence operation surveillance okay. normally before it starts raining we go ahead of time to do that then bring some key areas that this area, this is what can happen there. This is what can happen there. So we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. That is the method of prevention that we go about it. So uh, when we are talking of some women, we in this Gunwest Municipal Assembly as an organization with all our recommendation and the plan that we have towards some women, it looks as if the Hua Kra is developing. And now, Amasama is the only place we have land. People running down to this place. At the same time, the people need sun for development. So we have measures. We have to keep in some, we have to have some mechanism in place to stop these kind of activities. Some like uh, raising the taxes we impose on those tipper trucks because automatically you can't stop the person at once that stop doing it. We have measures that we have to put in place. And as such, we've put a lot. So we talk to the chiefs in the various communities, how needful we need the sun, the surface sun, and how it could be of help doing development. And the reason why not to win it. 
So we go ahead with education. Normally with education. The community base, we had the DVGs train them. That was it. So sometimes when some winning activities start somewhere, we are just located in the municipal central. We have our DVGs in the various communities who give us the important information. We could the task force of the municipal assembly a lot. And then we've also uh, derived this mechanism whereby there, uh, there should be a reclamation after the exercise. Where necessary, we can't stop them. We make sure that they deposit some money in the municipal assembly so that after the exercise, if the place is reclaimed, they have to come back for their money. If not, then we use that money to do the reclamation exercise to make sure that the place is level so that we don't have a lot of these issues around those areas. So those are the measures we have put in place towards some winning activities. And for some time to go, if we cannot stop it, we will mitigate it to the level of which we think we all feel okay in this municipal. Wow. Yeah. I think I, I, I must say you are doing a, a yeah. great job there. Yeah. Because looking at the measures you put in yeah. place to make sure we care, especially sun women. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, sir. How do you plan for natural disasters? Because you made in your point that you plan ahead so that when any time there is an incident, you'll be able to rush to the people. Okay. Uh, but let, let's look at the people of Keta. When the incident happens, like nothing more was not really up and doing that particular um, municipality. It's like they were like, we are now preparing to meet them. So pertaining to what you just said, that you plan ahead, mm -hmm. why is it that um, they didn't really bring out, get to release their terms immediately the tidal mm -hmm. was happened? Uh, that is a national exercise, as I may put it. And we divided the municipal among ourselves as directors. And we have the national director, that is the director general, okay. with his deputies. And I believed, as we heard a story, I don't think Nanmu do not move there with relief items. They, they move there with relief items. Yeah. My question is mm -hmm. uh, the urgency to which they, they, yeah. they, they, they responded to, how urgent they responded to yeah. the situation, is my, my concern. The other situation. This is about my level because it's a national exercise. And uh, that one, it is the director there with the national authorities. Uh, they work together hand in hand to work on Kita issue. Yeah. But what I heard our deputy director saying is they went with enough relief items. But as for the preparation, Tawes, that weaves, I cannot talk much about okay. that so now let's yeah. come back to your yeah. jurisdiction that's good okay so um how do you prepare for natural disasters okay you know disaster is of twofold disaster itself is of twofold mm -hmm. we have the anthropogenic disasters and then we have the natural disasters okay. when we are talking of anthropogenic we are talking of the man-made disasters either by man activity directly or indirectly. Yeah, and then we have the natural disasters. So for instance, uh, our work, NADMO actually is, how do I call it? Organization and then management of responsibilities, especially when it comes to uh, preparedness, uh, response and recovery uh -huh. we have the phases of disaster management being the preventive prevention stage then we have the mitigation stage at least i think five we have a lot but let me focus on these five we have the uh, prevention stage then mitigation stage then we have the preparedness. Then we have the response. Then we have recovery. So to run effective management of disaster, these phases must not be overlooked. Okay. Yeah. The very first phase we are talking of, uh, how do I call it? Prevention. That exactly goes with, uh, how do I call it? Uh, trying to prevent it. 
for it not to happen at all. You try to prevent it not to happen at all. That is where we put in the surveillance, the operation surveillance. Yeah, we go ahead of time to search for the problem. We will not sit down for somebody to call me that there is a disaster here, so come, move there, move there. No, we put in surveillance measures. But we go ahead searching for the problems. That is the first step, trying to prevent it at all. Then we come to mitigation. When we are talking of mitigation, you are trying to make lessen the impact. That, that uh, how do I call it? Uh, emergency would have created to escalate into a disaster. Yeah. So we have the, how do I call it? The, uh, I have spoken of the, the uh, preventive, then the mitigation level. At the mitigation level, that is where you see us doing the number dredging ahead of the rains. Yeah, we said this area is not good. We have to dredge you know, the silt, some drains. Not more, we've been doing it. We distill the drains. We do the dredging exercise as well. And then sometimes we go ahead planting trees in some of the schools. That is against windstorm. And then uh, dredging for a uh, flood. And then clearing some buildings on waterways with the assembly task force as well, the works department. Yeah, making sure we clear those buildings and walls. Uh -huh. Sometimes we talk of emergencies like fire outbreaks. We also prepare and then we train our, our people. Towers, the fighting of fire. So when we are talking of the mitigation issues, we put so many things in place. So that we will not experience it, even if the thing would have happened, we will not feel it as it will happen. That is the mitigation level. Then we talk of the response level, uh, the preparedness level. We have to prepare ourselves towards the issue. That is training, putting into training. We train our DVGs because in every community society, we try to have our uh, disaster volunteer groups. So we have to enhance their capacity so that they'll be able to fight, let's say, fire, flood. When there is incident, they, it, it, it should have occurred. They will quickly run out, doing it before we get even to the scene. Because I mean, Amasama, take it for instance, the thing happened at uh, uh, Kujuashon. Before you get car from here, moving to that place, you will not have any good results. So we have we train them all over okay. so that they will take the lead before we even we get into the place. Okay. So are, those are the preparation we put in place so that the particular issue. Uh -huh. So that is the preparedness stage. Then we come to response. When we come to response, it is where we fight the problem as it occurs. If the incident okay, there's no way out we can dodge it. So we have to fight it and make sure we have the safety of the people in the very, that particular area. Because now, how do we respond to disaster? You cannot just go to the, get to the disaster scene and then start it. No, you will kill yourself at the end of the day. So we are trained in such a way that as soon as we get to the scene, we put certain measures in place. Number one, we have to, I mean, have facts about the incident. We gather facts. We have to gather facts. Then we have to have evidence based. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After the evidence based, then you put yourself into a crisis mood. Really? Yeah. And how is that for him? How is that? <laughs> can you no, no, no. Him? Those people who are facing the problem, mm -hmm. you you feel like part of them. Okay. Uh -huh. You have that mindset. Okay. Yeah. Then after that, you have to do evaluation quickly. Then you plan before for your response. Mm -hmm. So this time, as I'm coming now, if there's a disaster scene, I have my men behind me. Whilst we sit down, they will be planning. Back, 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 back. Because this is the area 
you have to pass here. There's a tunnel there. You have to do evacuation here. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do this before you enter. So we don't just enter into disaster scene and just respond to the disaster. Okay. We don't do that. Then finally, the, the plan that they have, their plan will tell you that from here, you pass here. From here, you take this place quickly okay. before we carry on with our work. We go ahead with our work. So these are the measures we put in place. That is a response act. Then after the response, what happened next? It's recovery. Mm -hmm. It's recovery. You have to try to recoup the people back to the stage where they were, the normal position, if not near to the position that they were before. Mm -hmm. That is where we try during, after the disaster, maybe we move all over Masamai. Areas, safe events, we are talking of a place that the people can move to in terms of any disaster. Okay. Safety place. Okay. Uh -huh. So quickly, because we will come to an area, you see that the place is overpopulated. Mm. With a threatened population, you have to make sure that you divide them or quickly move them from the place to. And so when you are moving them to, from the place, where are you taking them to? Okay. That's the first thing. So we have some churches. We have some schools that if we have a problem here we have to move the people to those areas quickly then after that during the period of response again mm -hmm. there we come out with our relief items before the relief items mm -hmm. can you mention in this jurisdiction mm -hmm. your safe um habits uh we have the better this school at uh, i'm a how do i call it uh satellite we have uh praise be at my we have we have a lot of them all over in, in, in every, every areas we know that they have such problems okay. we plan for those areas so, so, so we have the data and then we have our safe events in every part of the municipal so um since you 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 are in your turn of office mm -hmm. which places really prone to natural disasters uh natural disasters normally that we face here is normally sometimes the natural disasters we have uh, a lot of places. First, I was an overseer with uh, both the north and west, mm -hmm. and somewhere like a veterinary of It's typically flood prone area. You know that when it rains, that place got flooded. There are some part of Achaman, Uduman, mm -hmm. uh, mid year. When you get to Tree of Life, then mid year cemetery down. All those areas are flood prone areas. So definitely, when it starts raining. We let our men get ready for those areas. Okay. And then behind uh, Rush Company, Kotuku, okay. we have the same issues there. Wow. Yeah, we have a lot, a lot. But normally, the work we are doing ahead of time mm -hmm. is mitigating the problem. Mm -hmm. So most often when it rains, you've not been having the problem as former as they were. Okay. Uh -huh. Looking at the open call, mm -hmm. is it the barrier? The cemetery going to after Tamils. Going down to Aushi Road, okay. I believe. Uh, how do I call it? There's a filling station right there. Exactly. Veterinary, that's, that's the veterinary. Now it's now in Ganov now because they curved Ganov out of west. So now I'm here, okay. and then that Ganov is here. So that's it. Does it. It's a Good. Rain. Good. And we have areas also. You see that when it rains, they have the drains, okay. which gets over flooded, move into people's people's houses. So when it start raining. We used to go to them, talk to them, move them from the areas. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have these weak buildings that we're going around inspecting. Mm -hmm. and then when we get it, we advise the people to get out from that place for the demolition exercise to be done. Even last week, we were some places around uh, the hospital, mm -hmm. just within the Samman Central. We have such buildings. Wow. That one we're working, working on, on open pits. That people, children might have fallen. Uh -huh. We work on all those things, making sure that those things will never happen. Yeah, that is our main objective. The objectives, as we are talking about, as for NADMO, it is our objective to maintain the culture of, how do I call it? Uh, we have to get a culture of uh, response, recovery, and then preparedness. And we do this through innovation and education. So you how see? do you 
extend um, your, your education to people? We extend our education to people. Most often churches, mm -hmm. we go to churches, we educate them. Mm -hmm. We go to the communities, we educate, to, we educate them. Schools, we do education because we cut them young. Yeah, we start training them. As, yeah, and so we have glory stations a lot that we've been going all over doing set trainings for the children and then the people as well. So goes, I'm supposed to be in some of the centers they are writing now as I'm speaking with you, monitoring the distances and then also. The, so not move, there's a lot. We there's a lot. Okay. We so there's a lot. What, what do you get support from when it comes to funding? You see, actually, when it gets to funding, it is our national office. Okay. Sometimes they send us, how do I call it, our impressed in the various offices. Okay. And then where the municipal assembly also find it worth and they see the good work we are doing, they also at times support us. Yeah, normally. So um, today is 16. So you're expecting that the finance minister will read the budget today. What do you expect for, for, for your organization? Uh, for my organization, actually, we deal with relief. Mm -hmm. So that aspect must be looked into very well, detail. Because, for instance, when there's a disaster, you want to take the people out of the place. Mm -hmm. You are going to station them at a different place altogether. Mm -hmm. The place that they will be for days, you have to feed them. Okay. Yeah. And then now, no, you come to uh, how do I, a recovery stage. You do construction, rebuilding. So, for instance, a village which has been affected with storm, I have to go there with roofing sheets. I have to move with things that they need to make sure that their buildings are intact. So those are the areas I want the finance minister to look at. And finally, I'll be very happy if he will look into our, this, our logistics issues, mm -hmm. vehicles mm -hmm. to the organization or municipal. That would be better because you go to some of the municipals, even we don't have vehicle, the directors don't have vehicles to move with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the assembly also, it will tell you that when you need a vehicle, call us. But emergency will not tell you, or the sister will not tell you that I'm coming tomorrow. So now, if the assembly is there, and I'm to tell them that there's a disaster, so I have to move, and by then their vehicles are not available, how will I go? Okay. I can't go. So, be, 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 okay, so that's what you're expecting from the yeah, yeah. You, um, you know that we are living in a country where we don't really uh, think about settlements, as in our arrangements. Um, settlements all over so with those areas where they have um, maybe conjoined houses together and that is not allowing free flow of um, water and they don't have drainages and all that what do you do what are you doing to keep them what are we doing to, to these people i'm having a similar situation as i'm speaking with you mm -hmm. at Oduma. i'm having a similar situation at Oduma. they put up the buildings across they never consider the drain and now when it rains, the whole place gets flooded. I have, I sat with them. Wow. Yeah. Well, you said you work with AME, right? Yeah. So, and I believe AM is so when you want to... The what happened is, mm -hmm. some settlers put up their borders without permit. finish with the building and below I've not been seeing the municipal assembly going down demolishing those buildings mm -hmm. no once the person is finished maybe penalty he will come and pay and then maybe the permits will be given to him but, but so now no. normally the problem is when you give the permit mm -hmm. as a municipal assembly mm -hmm. and it happened as I am I just said then the people who just hold you responsible because you give the permit so normally when it happened like this i quickly write to the municipal chief executive we will minute it to the that particular department 
and then we make sure that as i'm saying now we are going there with the uh, physical planning department they deal with the local plan of the area and then the works department as well then feeder rules as well okay. so when we move to the place they will tell us that this area is water this area is a route this area is this so now from that very the, from the field you know that you've already committed yourself because when you put up your building you are blocking the entire water and so that building must go down wow yeah it has to go down so uh, when they come to the west it has to go down as you mean i'm a victim yeah i put up a three-story building yeah and uh, maybe i went for a permit Mm -hmm. before building yeah i finished building and they tell me maybe they need a place for a road construction or it, it's a it will it will never happen really? the reason being that before going for the permit mm -hmm. we have a committee in the assembly special planning committee mm -hmm. they deal with permit mm -hmm. so environmental protection uh, epa and we have the physical planning department, mm -hmm. the works department, the fire service, mm -hmm. the NADMO as well. So normally, when you apply for permit, they will accept it, will visit the field. They go out to inspect what you brought to us. So when we get to the place, even there are some leaves, around the area when i have a look at it i'll tell you that this place is water log area so we have to trace the source of the water so if i say so all of them say yes they will stop it calm down sit down have meeting of what i just said plan it well if there is alternative maybe they will tell you that we can use the water underneath or we can use it but we can allow the water to pass this area. Mm -hmm. Then that one, it is acceptable. Fire will tell you that where you are putting up the burden, there will be no road coming to this place. When there is a disaster, we cannot move with our tender to this place. So no. Bureaucrats will be there, inspect the project and come down. So there is no way out after inspection. That would have been a problem. Mm -hmm. And unless otherwise, <laughs> yes so this is what happened so when they dodge the permit they dodge all those things because I cannot go and inspect I don't know that somebody is developing at Koyu Ashram. I don't know until they finished and the problem is there then they will call you so when I get there and that burden I'm supposed to take it out for the community I'm supposed to do that wow. I can remember at Unyansana we had a meeting with the chiefs at the chief palace, Madmo was there, fully represented. And we have to sit with them. And what happened? They've sold the land left and right. And the middle, where water is supposed to pass, at the same time route, they've sold that place too. So about five rooms there, buildings there, five here, and then they have blocked that place. We have to call the chief. We tell him point blank that that building must be out of that very place. So quickly, the people organized, I spoke to them, the money for the land the person bought. And they have paid, they pay the person so that they take it, they take that property out there so we can get a flow of water. That is all that we do. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I must say, your work is very simple. So, Nadmu, 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 it's all about uh, coordinating mm -hmm. the resources of government institution and non-governmental agencies. You see, non-governmental agencies and also improve the life of the people in the community and train them to have the capacity to fight disaster. That is the main work of this uh, NADMO. So before we wrap up, do you have any, any, anything that you want the government to do for you aside of what you have stated uh, that you want to see in the 2022 budget mm -hmm. read today? Do yeah. you have any anything that you want the government to step in immediately to help your your organization in their dealings? Quickly, most of them, as I said, mm -hmm. after uh, disaster, we have to 
there is, there is a need for recovery. For instance, at Myra Olama, after the flood, it got into a very, so many houses. The, a lot of property were lost. After the incident, we realized that it is a, an issue of a cavity. The cavity is too small. The water is not able to flow. So sometimes it heats and then overflow and then enter into the various houses. So we need a drain there. What do we do? At times, the municipal assembly is not in a position to do it. And maybe government has plan, as I told you. Because as NABU, we draw the disaster plan municipally. We have to draw our plan. We have to revisit the plan. And if there are some changes, we have to do it. So maybe the national plan do not fall at Myra Ulama for their COVID. Mm -hmm. But now it has happened. So what do we do? We have we call the people there, we sat them down, we talk to them, they understood why they have to contribute towards the project. And it will surprise you. 30 meter feet uh, wide stretch. We are almost done with it. Not move with the community. It will interest you. A lot of cities. But they've been able to do it. So if within we have the relief items, cement comes, those things, we'll be able to help them with, I think, 50 bags of cement. And they will continue the work. Those are the areas I want them to do. And then to care for our logistics, that we need to work. Yes. Those are the things I want the government to reconsider. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. But I have, I've really learned a lot from mm -hmm. your, your dis our discussion. Yeah. And I believe that those in authority, they have heard your, your plea, yeah. and then they will answer accordingly mm -hmm. and at ASP itself. <laughs> 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 okay, so today I was here with the director of NADMO yeah. for Gawas Municipality. We spoke about um, the details of the NADMO and the way forward. He also made his suggestion as to what he is expecting to hear from the 2022 budget. And I believe that Finance Minister, the second of the if you heard him speak, provide them with their logistics so that they'll be able to fight uh, disasters so that you will, you will preserve lives and properties. My name is Priscilla Moore. This is what we drew to today's curtains on Broad Daylight. Continue to follow us on our social media handles, Facebook, CMGA TV, YouTube, CMGA TV, Twitter, CMGA TV, and Instagram, also on CMGA TV. And our website is also www.cmonline.com.gh. On to another episode of this wonderful show. Bye.